too long ago that I actually had Ron Logan as my number one perp in the Delphi murders. Now, what changed my position was the idiocy of other people blaming white supremacists and also um, Richard Allen's confession over five times to his mom, to his wife. And there's still definitely part of me that believes Richard Allen, of course, is the guy. But I've always, always believed that if it wasn't Richard Allen, Ron Logan was the perp. And I'm not the only one that believes that because his ex-girlfriend does too. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time. This is your second video of the day, so if you ain't seen the first one, go back and see that shit. Um, before I get started, though, I want to say thank you to everybody that supports the channel, any of my channels, regardless of platform and regardless of method, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do if it wasn't for you, the Gun Squad. Big shout out to you guys. Love you so much. If you, too, find my content valuable, feel free to hit those links down below. Support the channel. Join the gun squad today. You can also find the links to my other content. If you're not a bitch ass snowflake, you may want to go check out my politics channel or the news channel or live stream channel or amusement park channel or hiking channel or gaming channel or wrestling channel. That's right, I got them all. Your boy puts in work all day, every day. Now let's go ahead and get to the story because this actually is, took quite a crazy turn. Delphi murder victim. In fact, let me, let me make this bigger. Delphi murder victim, Libby German. This is some new shit right here. I don't even know how this got leaked when there's a gag order. Was almost decapitated by the killer. That makes this story so much more fucked up. New probe claims, as locals query whether rapist dead man who owned property where girls were found is real murderer. Now, if you go back, like I said, to my initial videos on Delphi, whether we're talking about years in the, in the past or even the ones on this channel, you will know that I always considered until the day that Richard Allen confessed, Ron Logan, my number one suspect. In, in 2022, cops made their first breakthrough with the arrest of Richard Allen. Libby German was almost decapitated when she was killed alongside her friend, Abby Williams, a new investigation has revealed. A shocking new probe in the Delphi murders has raised doubts over the suspect charged with the brutal slang and claims Libby, Libby German was almost decapitated. New details of the girl's cause of death have been released in the six years since their murders in February 2017 until a Crime Nation documentary this week, including claims that Libby was almost beheaded out of, rain, out of rage. I have not seen this Crime Nation documentary. The admission was seen in text from someone on the scene that later leaked online, also claiming whoever did it targeted Libby for sure, and that the 14-year-old fought like hell. In October 2022, cops made their first breakthrough with the arrest of Richard Allen. However, the new documentary instead pointed to a new killer, the man who owned the property where the girls were discovered, Ron Logan, and chilling new claims from his ex-girlfriend. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Libby German is the chick on the left, okay? Libby German, and I don't mean to speak bad about the dead. Libby German was on... Remember Libby German had been having conversations with that dude that was acting like he was a model? The fat dude? You know who I'm talking about, right? Libby German, in my opinion, her being the one targeted, I do believe is a possibility... I definitely believe it's a possibility because if she's the one doing things like talking to dudes and men on the internet, then I think it, it puts her at risk. Now, here's the problem. The only way that would lead to a target attack on Liberty, Liberty German by, by, you know, is basically if she told a guy she was talking to on the phone that she was going to be at the bridge that day, which is very possible. When Keenan, that was his name, Keenan Klein. When Keenan Klein got arrested and he was originally thought of as the guy doing it, he had all this child porn. He was he he was the guy that uh, was was faking like he was the model. 
And he had conversations with Liberty German. So it is very, very possible that that could be what led to the death. Now, my problem with that is I'm not necessarily sure that Keenan Klein has what it takes to murder someone. He's very fat. He doesn't look like he's all that agile and mobile. And he clearly was not the bridge guy. The bridge guy, to me, always looked like Ron Logan. Always looked like Ron Logan, and it would make sense since it was Ron Logan's property. Why he would be walking down that direction, down the hill. And now his ex-girlfriend has came out and did an interview, and we're going to take a look at that as well. But I, I just want to say in regards to Liberty German, it is very possible. Now, when you look, you got to remember, the only thing that tied Richard Allen to any of this was a shell casing which nobody knows for sure if that happened that day or if Ron or if, uh, you know, if Richard Allen had been hunting on Ron Logan's property. Logan, by the way, he died in January of 22 from COVID and was one of the first suspects investigators looked into. He made several media appearances in the aftermath of the murders and they, as they gained national attention. After key pieces of evidence emerged, a picture of the killer and a recording of his voice taken by Libby on her phone, Logan appeared on Inside Edition to claim he didn't recognize the person or the voice from anyone he'd seen on his property. He made sure he came out and said that. Now, what you guys don't perhaps understand about Ron Logan is Ron Logan gave a bullshit alibi. He's, Ron Logan said he was with his cousin or something going to pick up tropical fish. The cousin refuted that. The cousin said I wasn't with them. And the reality of this is it was found that Ron Logan's entire alibi was off. Now, Ron Logan, I guess, couldn't was already in trouble. I think he was on house arrest, so I believe Ron Logan had to, you know, they say that's the reason he lied about his alibi, but that's not, no, no. To me, that's not good enough. His ex-girlfriend, Connie Dillman, has claimed she has no doubt that Logan was in the clips and said she insisted to authorities that her ex is the killer. That's your voice, she said of Logan. I heard the voice of down the hill thousands of times. It's Ron Logan, she says. Dillman said she began her six-year relationship with Ron Logan after meeting him in a bar in Delphi. And they quickly bonded over their love of horses and the outdoors. But she said their relationship went downhill before long he would begin trolling her every day and treating her like a sex tool. Now, for some reason, women always say that bullshit. When I didn't want to have sex, he forced it on me. Of course, here comes another Me Too claim. I was helpless, she said. I accidentally, I was forced to suck dick. They all, well, women always say this shit and it's ridiculous. Shortly after ending their relationship, the murders of the two teen girls rocked the Delphi community and made national headlines, leading Dillman to be sure her former lover was the killer when she saw him on TV. I, in my opinion, this is him. To me, that does not look like Richard Allen. It looks like an older gentleman. And so I perfectly can see it being Logan. After the murders captured national attention, the law enforcement came under fire for not releasing details of the crime, factor they cited in wanting to keep control over the investigation, which is, you know, a good, a good reason. Amid the frustration for information, lurid text messages leaked online from someone at the crime scene which the documentary claimed were shared by Abby's uncle, David Erskine. The text read, Me and my other sister's boyfriend are the ones who found the girls Tuesday. Coroner's report stated everything was over by 3.30. No rape. Abby was dressed. Libby was nude. Let that sink in. Libby's top hat was covered with leaves and sticks, almost like they were trying to cover her. Now remember, I told you guys that those were not runes on that girl. That to me, the sticks being on the bodies was them just trying to cover up the bodies. So all you people with your cult theory, your white supremacist theory, you're all fucking retarded. All of you. All they were doing was trying to cover up the bodies. That's what it makes sense. Libby, uh, the, the only DNA would be from Libby's fingernails. She fought like hell. Whoever did it targeted Libby for sure and knew what they were doing with Abby. 
It was personal with Libby, which once again takes you back to the messages and things that Libby had been doing on her phone, which in my opinion, once again, brings up that fat motherfucker, Keegan Klein. However, whose DNA was on the fingertips under the fingertips of Libby German? An expert in the case added that there was a talk of Libby almost being decapitated, which looks like it was done out of rage. Scrutiny has fallen on the investigation and the arrest of Allen following his arrest, particularly due to the evidence produced in Allen's probable cause affidavit. The affidavit cited just a single piece of evidence linking Allen to the murders, which is that shell casing. And like I said, until Allen confessed, I didn't think Allen was guilty at all. At all. Sources close to the investigation claim that Allen was acting with at least two other men and was involved in a child sex ring. Now, that's potentially possible. And now, is it possible? Allen was... Uh, uh, is it possible that Allen was working with Ron Logan and Keegan Klein? That's always been a possibility. Keegan Klein is a chomo sack of shit. Ron, Ron Logan, I believe, is definitely possible to be a chomo sack of shit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interview. I remember him from the Inside Edition. Liberty German shot this chilling image of the killer approaching the girls on a hiking trail, and she recorded the killer's voice. What do you hear on there? Nothing that I recognize at all. Here it is. There's no one. I, I don't... Uh, I don't recognize the voice at all. What? <coughs> you see Ron Logan's response? That motherfucker was, hey, it's nobody I know at all. One, I, I don't, uh, I don't recognize the voice at all. Wow. That's your voice. This is his girlfriend of six years. Voice of, I'm down the hill. Oh, thousands of times, it's Ron. Logan sent down the hill. Now, let me also say this. I want to say this. I don't necessarily believe her. I don't... Look, man. Scorned women will lie and say anything. Now, the truth is that I think it's... Here, here's what makes this entire situation. is because she made it about her and how victimized she was. You'll see. And just to be perfectly honest... You know, even though I think, and I've always thought, Ron Logan is a strong candidate for who did this. Once a woman comes in with her rape stories, it destroys the entire story. This is about a, a young girls being killed, one almost being beheaded, and you want to make it about you and how you were used as a sex toy and you suck too much dick, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, man. And it almost ruins the credibility of the story. And I called. I called the tip line. Joining me now, uh, News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Enton. So Connie Dillman seems so confident about this. Like, what else makes her think? that it's her ex-boyfriend who's the killer. Yeah, this was a big moment tonight, Ashley. We've never heard from Connie Dillman before. This is all brand new. Um, so this is this is uh, something we've never, never heard before. And let's also not forget in all this that Ron Logan is dead, by the way, for people who are following him. He died of COVID. Um, but she basically says that he is a bad man, that he is a violent man, that she thinks that he did it, that he was violent with her in the past. And and as you heard in that clip, that when he when she heard that voice, she thought right away. Look, man, just because a motherfucker is willing to smack a bitch, and I mean this wholeheartedly, just because a motherfucker's ready to smack a bitch doesn't mean he's ready to rape and kill little girls, all right? So I want to defend Ron Logan there, even though I think it's definitely possibly Ron Logan. I just want to make that clear. This weird thing where you have two adults fighting and domestic issues. And all of a sudden, that means that one of those two people are somehow capable of committing a crime this atrocious just because they got in domestic spats. That's a weird thing. 
I've been in domestic spats, and I can honestly tell you neither myself or any of the women that I've been with in my life do I think, just because a woman has put her hands on me, it doesn't make me think, oh my God, they could go kill little girls. Just two grown-ups fighting. And, we, and of course, us men have the capability of saying, eh, we all fucked up. But women always tend to say it's the guy. The guy did it. It's never the woman. And that's like, like I said, it drops her credibility here. That it was Ron Logan. Uh, listen to a little more of what she said for the first time tonight uh, about what kind of man this is. Ron's property was right next to Monon High Bridge. He had some pasture, he had some goats, and the horses. I moved in with him for a while, and it, it didn't really work out very well. He was controlling with me. So what? I had to keep the house tidy. Yeah. That's your job, bitch. You're the broad. You don't just live here for free. Keep the house clean, bitch. That's your job. Couldn't lay down on the couch. It just had to be the way he wanted it. So I listen to her right now. Her, her big complaint is he asked me to clean house instead of laying on the couch. If you're abroad and you're upset because your man wants you to clean house instead of lay on the couch, you don't need no fucking dude because you ain't shit as a bitch. But he wanted me there. It, it goes a little bit further than... Um, mean in his life he's I've pretty much a sex tool Ooh, right we can see clearly can we see? yeah we can we can see clearly that's exactly right so sexy so hot a man just wants to use you as a sex toy okay yeah we can stop okay fuck out of here I don't know where that came from. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, God. <sighs> Dramatics is over? It's over? All right. All right. When I didn't want to have sex, he forced it on me. And I Did he? was helpless. Helpless? You know, I, I couldn't help myself. And when I did get away, he would always draw me back. Draw you back? One day, yeah. He had been working on um, putting a new door. <laughs> Every time I got away, I just had to go back and suck Ron Logan's old dick. We were on the basement cellar, and I said I wanted to break it off with him. And out of the blue, he hit me over the head with the crescent wrench. <laughs> <laughs> I remember taking off. <laughs> Ron, I'm leaving you. <laughs> go ahead, bitch. <laughs> crescent wrench to the head. There you go. Fuck out. <sighs> That's not funny. It's funny. Off running do my vehicle and I remember falling to the ground and I was afraid he was going to hit me again so I was able to get on my hands and knees and I crawled away I got to my vehicle and I was able to to leave it and then I felt the blood running down my That's face bumped up. I barely remember hey, yeah, I mean he's wrong for that but that doesn't mean he can kill a motherfucker I actually think that this is a perfect example of how he didn't kill a motherfucker. Because, I mean, you pissed him off so much that he, he bitch smacked you with a crescent wrench and then let you crawl away and leave knowing that you'll probably run to the cops. You see what I'm saying? Ron Logan let you crawl away, get in your car, and leave after smacking you in the head with a crescent wrench. That means it was a momentary loss of him being able to keep himself together. He did something extremely violent, extremely fucked up. 
But he lets you live. He lets you crawl away. He even lets you leave knowing that you could go get him locked up for hitting you in the head with a goddamn crescent wrench. That means he probably, I mean, if he was going to kill somebody, wouldn't he have killed you? Remember the drive to the doctor's office, which is only a few miles to Delphi, and I had um, seven steeples put in my head. But uh, I actually went to my sister's after that. I'm lucky I got out of that situation, but it took a long time. It really is stunning to hear her tell that story for the first time. She's obviously very, very emotional. And again, she feels confident, Connie does, uh, that the wrong guy may be locked up, which is which is pretty startling to think about. Not only that, that is. Ron Logan had kind of a weird alibi. He did. I, from what I remember seven years ago, I didn't really check out. So weird. Um, so he claimed to police that he was going to a town outside of Delphi to buy tropical fish and that he was with his cousin. Uh, but we later come to find out that when they looked into this, they talked to the cousin. The cousin didn't back that up. They were never able to, to, to clear that alibi, to figure out if it was true or not. Um, and, and even to this day, it seems like he lied about where he went. Pretty specific when you're you know, mentioning tropical yeah. fish and easy yeah. to, to track that. But this is a small community, and you know they're not used to having double homicides, especially with kids. So, uh, I mean, I've seen it happen, you know. Um, all right, so what about the property? like? They did look at his property. They they actually did investigate, but I feel like it might have been a long yeah. lag. Come on, Bumville. Did, Hurry up. A month after the murders. Um, so think about it. A month has gone by. There's so much that could have been done out there at that property in that time. A month. A um, month is a long time yeah. for anything. Right. Uh, to, I mean, even the weather uh, can take. Um, just, just. I mean, there were a lot of mistakes with this investigation, a lot of issues, and this is, just seems like it was another one. But thank you for watching. Now, I will say this. I have to admit, because I initially thought it was Ron Logan, this is a very interesting video for me to do. Because I still also think Richard Allen did it because he confessed. Is it possible Richard Allen, Ron Logan? Because wasn't Richard Allen arrested after Ron Logan died? Isn't it possible is Richard Allen, Ron Logan, and maybe even Keegan Klein and Keegan Klein's dad? I think there's more to this story. And what it's not is the goddamn um, Odin's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ron Logan, to me, is Bridge Guy. And if you believe that Bridge Guy has to be the guy that murdered them, then in my opinion, it would mean Ron Logan murdered them. It is 100% Ron Logan or Richard Allen or both. Let me know what you guys think. Does this alter your opinion? Do I have any other people that believe Ron Logan could be the guy? Definitely possible. It's not the old nights at all. Stop with the old night shit. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think. If you like what I do here and you find my content valuable, feel free to hit the link, support the channel. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. See you tomorrow.